Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. I thought in this video I'd give you an update. If you watch my video from October 1st when I reset up this 40 gallon breeder here, uh, <clears throat> today is October 28th. And from October 1st to October 28th makes about, you know, from the setup, let's say 28, 27 days it's been set up. But what have I noticed? and that amount of time. If you remember correctly, the reason I redid the aquarium is if you look at that piece of wood on your left hand side, it's full of like maroon algae. Some people may even mistake it as beard algae, but that's not really a good sign uh, when you have an algae like that uh, and it's predominant algae instead of your nice green algaes that uh, uh, predominate our aquarium. But as you can see, the algae got all over the wood and start going all over the plants and everything else. So I'm going to give you an update of what I've done to the aquarium in those 28 days, 27 days it's been set up and what I have done. Well, first of all, let's take one step at a time. As you can see, the male to the right, that is a male Belzani. And the uh, male Belzani will have the hump on the head compared to the females with no hump. When I bought those, I bought those in, uh, let's say, about July 25th. And I got them maybe a few days after that. So, what, August, September, October? So, let's say I've owned them for three months. The There's the male. And in that time, when I got them, they were no more than an inch and a half long. And in that three months, they have doubled 100% in size. So uh, to me, that's pretty good. So now they're over three inches, and that's just a matter of three months. Uh, like I said, I showed in my last video, if I correct, that uh, they did spawn. And uh, so they've already are maturing. The goldfish, what the goldfish are doing is the, they're chasing the female and the males have tubers on the side of their gills, which some hobbies would say look like little pimples on the side of their gills. So you can tell they're in breeding condition. And of course, they're, they're not chasing the female. As you can see, that's a Watkin female, the orange and white one. That's the female. And the rest, you can see the tubers on the side of their gills, which mean they are the males. Uh, you can see them chasing the female and all she wants to do is eat. Hey, leave me alone. I I'm eating here, you know, and uh, but because of the uh, barometer has changed here in Florida and they're outside, they feel that uh, atmospheric pressure has changed. Not that the temperature has changed a lot. I noticed I looked at the temperature that hasn't really changed. It's basically the barometer has changed and that's what's causing them to chase the female. Anyhow, I, so I thought I'd show you firsthand. But if you take a look at the wood here, you can see that it's changing. And that's just in a matter of a month. You see the patches that look like, what's going on there? There's patches where the maroon color algae seems to be leaving and it's being replaced by green algae. Do you see that? That's a good sign. That means the tank is correcting itself very slowly. We can, we still have to remember, this is still in its infancy stage. Uh, a tank that's only, you know, one month old. It's not an old tank. Okay, we have to wait a good 60, 90 days or even longer for a tank to really break in. But it's good to see that within a matter of about a month, we see changes happening to the algae to where it's giving way from the purplish algae, maroonish purplish algae, to a green algae is replacing it, which is a good sign. And the only reason, like I said, I changed it is because the old tank had sand and that was uh, up for over two years. And I took that down and replaced it with the kitty litter and, of course, the sea chem fluorite. I uh, used on as a cap for that. That's all I used. I didn't use any 
laterite or anything because the sea chem seems to have uh, its substrate has iron already into it. So the bacteria have enough iron to start accelerating and growing. But I just wanted to show you that the big difference is you can see things slowly changing within a matter of weeks, uh, how it's going back to the better. In fact, I even noticed some of the rocks are what you would call Mexican pebbles. They're called that I have that are flat, which what's uh, the uh, Bellazine I have spawned on, one of the flat Mexican pebbles, they cleaned it off and put their eggs on that. Uh, you can tell it's instead of turning that maroonish purple algae grown on it, it's turning green. Good sign. I know a lot of you are saying, hey, I don't want any algae, but trying to get rid of any algae, and I'll explain why algae is even grown in the tank. First of all, um, you're not going to have fish growth if you don't feed. And as you know, I did a video on, I have a automatic feeder from Eheim. It feeds them four times a day. That's how I got the growth from, let's say, the end of July until the end of October, which is three months. That's how I got the growth of them doubling in size within three months' time. They were just little bitty fish of an inch and a half. If you you know, go look at a tape measure and figure out, hey, that, that's pretty good growth in three months' time that you can double the fish in size. So they're not going to double in size that quickly if you're not feeding them, unfortunately. And if you're feeding them, you have another problem, which we all know. The more food that is presented to the fish, the more nitrates and phosphate problems you are going to have in your aquarium because food consist of nitrates and phosphates. And that's why people, when they make aquariums and they tell you how great they do, and well, they barely have any fish in the, in the aquarium. As you see in this aquarium, it doesn't have any plants. Okay, not 70% of the aquarium is plants. And the reason is, look at the plants. I put some of those uh, hydrophilia plants in the aquarium. Those were the ones I made from seed. And as you can see, the goldfish just are eating on them and tearing them apart. But I wanted to find out what the goldfish would do. They don't seem to bother the crypt very much, but this, I guess this particular plant they like, so they're munching on it. Big complaint to goldfish is they eat on plants. Well, here's an example. Look at how bad the plants are looking because they've been eaten on by the goldfish. So when you have an aquarium and you really can't put 70% of plants in the aquarium, you need to have a biological filtration system that can handle all the insults without depending on plants. And this is a, well, this is a pure case of it. This is showing you a case of excellent fish growth. Both different species of fish are spawning. Both are doing well without being sick or anything else. And the tank's only been set up for about 30 days. Now, as you know, if you watch the other video, I do explain that I did not touch the canister filter that has a BCB bag in it, a big one, and it was already acclimated. It's been going now for over two months, that canister filter. So I just carried it over to this tank, and of course I put some uh, Fritzine 7 in the tank to start it. But I think that's pretty good that within a month's time, you can see the changes of how the algae is reacting to the new biological filter compared to the biological filter that was using sand. This one is using kitty litter with, of course, the sea chem fluoride product, which is a little more open, a little bigger than sand, the granule size is where the sand was compacting, uh, this will not compact like that. The pore water and permeability are two things you have to think about when making a bio biological filter. If the pore water is hindered and the permeability is hindered in any way, shape, size, or form, you're gonna start having problems 
with your biological filter. And it may not show its ugly head in a matter of months, but it could take years. And as you can see, after two years, I decided that, you know, hey, I don't think this is doing well. I don't think this is doing well at all. Uh, definitely, it needs to be attended to and addressed, whatever the problem is, of why I seem to be getting this maroonish algae growing all over everything. And I do not want that. Well, we can see now it's giving away, it's starting to give away to the green algae. The animal life inside the aquarium is really quite a lot for a brand new aquarium, right? And they're being fed quite a lot because a lot of people don't want to feed their fish a lot because they understand there's a trade-off. There's a yin and a yang. You, you may have the benefit of your fish growing, but on the other hand, you may have the, the downfall of algae problems that will be taking place. And in this aquarium, as you can see, that's what I want to show you. It's not full of plants and it's ha handling the fish load. It's handling the fish load and the food load that is going in the aquarium. And it seems to not be bothering the fish because they are spawning and doing their thing and their growth rate. And like I said before, I noticed the growth rate of the goldfish since I got them back has really increased since I've been feeding them the four times a day. So I wanted to give everybody an update. One is be patient. You know, nothing's going to happen overnight. Be patient. It will happen very slowly as your bacteria build up. What you don't want, of course, is ammonia, nitrites. Keep your nitrates as low as humanly possible for the amount of food you're feeding and keep your phosphates as low as humanly possible. But the plants that I transplanted when I redid this aquarium, the crypt, the crypt seem to be doing good. I noticed they're developing root systems all over again, even though I had to pull them out and ripped a lot of the roots and some of them maybe barely had any roots left to them. They all seem to be growing back a nice root system and the crip seems to really be doing very good in this aquarium. We also have to remember there is no CO2. So the plants are going to grow a little different in this aquarium than in an aquarium that has CO2. That's a that's a gimme. This has no CO2. Plus the fact if you think about it, if you look at the aquarium, the bubblers, the the outlet of the canister filter is going to definitely definitely release CO2 very quickly into the atmosphere. So the plants really aren't getting that CO2 like, well, like a, you know, a planted aquarium would have. But I'm not worried about it because as you can see, the goldfish, now they'll, they'll destroy them. So hope you enjoyed the video. I think it's a good update because I want people to understand Aquariums go through changes. Uh, some of them will be faster than others. Some of them will be slower than others. But, uh, and this will depend on a lot of things because I'm always asked about that. What is your fish load? How much are you feeding? Or, or aren't you feeding? What are you feeding? Is there a lot of nitrogen, a lot of phosphates in the food? The What kind of fish do you have too? Makes a big difference than your fish load. I mean, you know, you understand, you can have... Let's say you say, oh, I have 50 neons. Well, 50 neons are a lot different than having a goldfish, right? It's, it's, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same mass. So you're not going to have the same pollution level with 50 neons as you are going to have even with a little three-inch goldfish. It's different in mass and amount of waste that's going to be produced. So until next time, this is Dr. Nova. I hope you enjoyed the video. But I did want to give you an update that things are going for the better. I like the results that are happy, happening. And um, I will keep you update on how the aquarium is doing. But I think it's doing pretty good for only less than a month being up. Myself, I think it is. So until next time, happy fish keeping. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.